watching, watching Pink Planet. Hey, it's Neil. I'm Andrew. And you're watching Pink, Pink Planet, Planet in Edinburgh. You're watching Pink Planet in Edinburgh, Scotland. <laughs> Hey everybody, we are in the land of castles, kilts, and whiskey. A city with a very proud heritage that includes a very surprising gay and lesbian history. I'm Bill Mantis, and in this edition of Pink Planet, we explore Edinburgh, Scotland. Edinburgh is one of the great cities of Europe and the capital of Scotland. With stunning architecture and an incredible history, Edinburgh has long been a tourist hotspot. For gay and lesbian travelers though, Edinburgh is also a safe and friendly city with a very welcoming gay community. Scotland is a great getaway for gay and lesbian travelers for the same reason it's a great getaway for any other traveler. It has fantastic heritage. In addition for gay and lesbian travelers, it caters for them specifically with a very vibrant uh, and well-established scene. This spot right here marks the tip of Edinburgh's pink triangle. I'll show you. This is Broughton Street right here with lots of gay bars, clubs and cafes to choose from. The other side of the triangle is Picardy Place with lots more down that way as well. You feel the atmosphere here. It's one of merriment and joyous. Yeah. Uh, when you're walking around, it's gay, here. everyone's gay. out, yeah, having we'll a good it. time. Oh, well, the street folks are here as well, so it's a, a kind of mix. Uh, it's not just uh, Edinburgh for gays and then streets. There is a sort of lap over, and this is the area where you do see the big crossover. How would you describe this neighbourhood? Very friendly, very friendly. Outgoing, it's good fun. This is where it was all happening really in Edinburgh. How openly gay can you be in this neighbourhood before you get into trouble? You don't even you get into trouble on the street. <laughs> you wouldn't. No. There's no way, no way people would allow it to happen. Could you kiss your girlfriend? Yeah. Hold her hand? Yes. And people would... Nobody would bother. No one would bother. <laughs> so. Time to check out some of Edinburgh's gay nightlife. We begin with a wee bevy at some of the local pubs before we check out some late night hot spots. How would you describe gay nightlife in Edinburgh generally? It's pretty good. It's grown a lot in the last few years. Um, it's got a lot bigger, a lot busier. People actually come here now as a gay city, whereas they weren't doing that a couple of years ago. I think um, in terms of the gay traveller who does decide to come to Edinburgh, in terms of the underground club movement, I would suggest that you wouldn't have any hassle about your sexuality and expressing your feelings to a partner or whatever. So. During the week it's always like a lot more party than the weekend, day. Eh? Yeah. Definitely, I mean there, there's lots of clubs on and it varies from week to week so you know you've got a choice to go into mixed, gay, straight and there's no barriers there at all, do you know what I mean? It's like people don't care if you're gay or not. Why is that do you think? I think it's just the city though, eh? They're just, the city's just so open and friendly. You get such a load of um, different cultures in Edinburgh because everybody visits Edinburgh. So you, you know you can be on a night out and you can just meet so many people from so many different cities. It's it's, it's really good. We love it so far. Yeah. yeah. We've only been here like a week or so, but we yeah. love it. Definitely, like the whole pink triangle thing is class. Definitely. He's wearing does. pink for the pink I triangle. Know. Yes. In honor wearing... of the pink triangle. The men are beautiful. Yeah. Very, very friendly to you? Well, <laughs> I've had no complaints so far, so it's all good. <laughs> the men friendly here? Yeah, they seem to be friendly to us anyway. So. <laughs> I would just like to say to everyone. Hi, this is the Scott Show. If you're wearing a kill. <laughs> if you're wearing a kill. And if you're quite you're handsome, then you're going to have a good time in Edinburgh. 
You're watching Pink Planet in Edinburgh, Scotland. Time for a short break. We're back with a whole lot more right after this. When we come back, we explore Edinburgh Castle's gay history. A lot of people aren't actually that aware of the history, but then they come and learn, obviously, and they come away, obviously, having gained a lot more from it. And we taste Scotland's most celebrated, yet feared, food. Most people's um, first impression of it is, oh God, how the, how the hell am I going to eat that? Win a trip for just a few pennies. Pink Planet is offering a bunch of holiday packages for two. Just text TRIP to 100-100. Place your bid. The lowest bid that no one else has wins the trip. More details at www.pinkplanet.tv. Remember, bid low. Hi, this is Ewan Colville from Visit Scotland and you're watching Pink Planet from Edinburgh. Hey, it's Lindsay here from Edinburgh and you're watching the Pink Planet. Enjoy! In Edinburgh, Edinburgh you're watching Pink Planet. <laughs> Scotland is famous for its castles and we are high atop Edinburgh Castle, the most famous castle in all of Scotland. Now this is a great spot to enjoy some amazing views of the city. It's also got a surprising gay history. The castle was home to King James who was so open about his homosexual love affairs during his reign in the early 1600s that even his subjects referred to him as Queen James. James VI of Scotland was the son of Mary, Queen of Scots, our most famous queen. Uh, James VI, he was born here at the castle. It's well documented his sexuality. Even as a, you know, a young star, James VI, who, who became James I of England. Can you imagine the parties? Can you imagine the parties? I would love to have been in his court. Why can't you come to Edinburgh and not come here? Um, it's got to be the views and the architecture for most because a lot of people aren't actually that aware of the history but then they come and learn obviously and they come away obviously having gained a lot more from it. Scotland's most famous and beloved export, of course, is whiskey. They love it so much here, they've dedicated a heritage centre and museum to the drink. We take a tour and a taste. Scotch whisky has been made all over the country, from the highlands to the lowlands, out to the islands, and it's been part of community and part of bartering exchange, almost a kind of money that was used for a lot of time. We would like to say that any visit to Scotland <laughs> has to include a it dram. Would not be complete without, without a what? A, a dram. That's what's what a we dram? call it. Well, a dram is just a measure of whisky, and it's not a particular size or quantity. It depends on how generous the person is that's serving you. Okay. <laughs> well, we like to think you're very generous because you're going to be serving us these whiskies right here. Is is there a technique to the tasting? There is, yes. Um, we don't now, just... if you're going to really appreciate a whiskey. <laughs> well, we're going to start with the Lowland whiskey because okay. this is our mildest. What do we do first? Quick look at the colour. Okay, hold it up. So hold it up to the light. Give it a swirl. Next is nosing. Now, um, nosing. when smelling? you come to Scotland, yeah, smelling. smelling, yeah, nosing is smelling. <laughs> Maybe you should hold this. Actually. Okay. <laughs> quite mild, quite light. It smells lovely. Are you having one too? <laughs> in Scotland, we uh, use the Gaelic word that means good health, okay, which, which is, is? slangeva. Slangeva. Perfect. Okay, slangeva. Slangeva. Next one is a Highland. So have a look at that one. What did we say last time? Slangeva. Slangeva. The next part we're going to visit is this region right okay. here. Okay, so this Speyside? is the Speyside region. Speyside. Some of the biggest selling single malt Scotch whiskies in the whole world come from the Speyside, Speyside area. You should find this one is a bit more complex than the palette. This is very good. Okay, can you believe we're actually going to have more? <laughs> <laughs> My face is getting all rosy. Okay, so now we move to the Final island. whiskey is from the islands. Cheers. Pink Planet. To Pink Planet.
Our final stop was Preston Field Mansion, originally built in 1687 but later converted to a gay-owned luxury hotel. During the Hotel Gala celebration of All Good Things Scottish, we had a chance to learn more about the infamous haggis. A lot of the, tonight's festivities centers around this particular piece of cuisine right here. This is? This is, this is the haggis. The haggis. Yes. Now what is a haggis? A haggis is uh, it's really a peasant food which uh, originated hundreds of years ago mm -hmm. when uh, people in Scotland didn't have an awful lot of money, they didn't have uh, an awful lot to eat, okay. and so they combined the offal uh, and they, they uh, discarded the normally discarded parts of sheep okay. uh, as well as uh, oats, grain, that sort of thing, mm -hmm. mixed it all together and voila, came up with this uh, nourishing yeah. meal, yes. <laughs> For the haggis ceremony and the haggis toast! <laughs> The haggis is probably one of the most celebrated foods I've ever experienced because you re recite poems to it, that's right. you, you basically you celebrate the haggis. That's right, that's right. And it is, it's such a humble looking thing, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's so humble and yet um, this, this mythology is built up around it. Ah, haggis! Do you love it? Yes, I love it. You do uh -huh. love it? Yeah. Haggis has a little bit of a bad rap. People are a little bit afraid of it, are they? Are they? No? A little bit of what? Are, are people a little weary of trying haggis? Well, Scott, if they're not Scottish, they're a wee <laughs> bit weary. It's actually not bad. We're having some haggis here in We're Scotland. We're having some haggis in Scotland. And you're watching Pink Planet. And we're watching Pink Planet. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Time for a short break. You're watching Pink Planet in Edinburgh, Scotland. We're back with a whole lot more right after this. When we come back, Edinburgh comes out about its gay history. You remember when Project really started as somebody saying, where are LGBT voices in the story of Edinburgh? And we meet the man who's responsible for reinventing the kilt. That was the kind of starting point to say that kilts could be still good quality but made in alternative fabrics. More modern. More modern for Cooler. any man. Listen up everybody, we're looking for Pink Planet reports from all over the world. Just visit pinkplanet.tv, register to be a member and record a video blog. Watch for yourself in upcoming episodes. Hi Canada, I'm Craig and this is my friend Stuart and we've been interviewed by Pink Planet. Hi, I'm Deirdre. I'm Daniel. And, and you're, you're watching, watching Pink, Pink Planet. Planet from Edinburgh. Woo! Hi, I'm Jim from Scotland. Fear for your honest sonsy face, great chieftain or the pudding race. This is a brand new addition to the city's cultural landscape. It's called Rainbow City, and it's an art exhibit that chronicles the city's gay history from as early as the 16th century. Because this is Rainbow City, this is an LGBT history map of Edinburgh, and it's really just a small selection of looking at the city according to a lot of the key sites, all those little numbered dots, there's a legend on the wall. Yeah. They're important places in LGBT history, some of them really going back hundreds of years. We didn't have room to put everything, put on, everything it. on there, but these are just sort of a sampling. Remember when Project really started as somebody saying, where are LGBT voices in the story of Edinburgh? Where are we in the narrative? Where are our images? And this was taken on board by people within the city council, people within the voluntary sector. So we were given funding to say, okay, find out. What do people in the community want to talk about? What do you want, what do you want on record? Yes, this is very much the case. People are isolated, have not been able to come out, as we would say, yes. to their family or to their colleagues at work. 
These are articles, just a collection of some of the things that were in the archive that people gave us that we blew up, of story, you know, just the sorts of things that people have been through, images of homophobia, images of paranoia. Yeah, this is something which scares people stiff, isn't it? I mean, the very idea of a couple of the same sex showing affection, touching each other as I'm touching you, right. quite out of the question. Yes, still, and this is um, what has upset people in Edinburgh. People here have lived through this colossal change. It used to be, when I first came to Edinburgh, uh, certainly from the early 70s, Edinburgh was the sort of place, if you were a lesbian or gay, this was a place you ran from. Yep. This was you where you left to go live your life in London or San Francisco or yep. where Amsterdam. And that's not the case anymore. Now it's a place that LGBT people really want to come to. I see so much on heterosexuality yeah. um, and not yet enough for the homosexual man. The closet, indeed. Now, in this particular closet, oh, you can, can we open actually, the closet. Can we actually you look in the closet? The That's closet. hilarious. <laughs> and in here, we have a bit of earlier LGBT history. Obviously, there are going to be those people in various sectors of Planet Straight who are always going to find something to be horrified about. We were expecting a bit more of the McNasties to come out of the woodwork and say, oh, waste of public money, shock horror. There hasn't been any of that. What do we this have here? This is Elton here? John, a performance costume, an early performance costume of Elton John's. To sort of in a way, again, this is, part, this is something, that the costume itself lives in Edinburgh full-time as part of the collection at the Museum of Scotland. Okay. They have it because it's an interesting piece of textile and design. Mm. They've loaned it to us because, in a way, Elton John is one of those people who really sort of indicates the kind of mainstreaming of, <laughs> uh, you know, of, of gay awareness in, yeah. in popular culture. So. Yes, so certainly. I think in a couple of years' time, we'll look back in amazement at the opposition expressed to our opening up the centre in Edinburgh. You're watching Pig Planet in Edinburgh, Scotland. Time for a short break. We're back with a whole lot more right after this. After the break, we meet the man giving the kilt a makeover. What bugs me about purists as, and traditionalists, which I hate even those terms because they don't wear a kilt every day, I do. We want to hear from you. Share your travel tips with the Pink Planet crew. Visit pinkplanet.tv, register to be a member, and submit a blog or email. Watch for your comments on upcoming episodes. There's probably nothing more traditionally Scottish than the kilt. You're about to meet a hot young fashion designer that's added a modern twist to the traditional kilt and certainly made a few waves in the process. What is a 21st century kilt? 21st century kilt is the movement of the traditional kilt, which is tartan, but properly sewn together into the 21st century, as in using plain fabrics, as simple as that. Your family's been in the kilt business for a really long time now, so what, but what was wrong with the traditional kilt? Well, my, my dad is Geoffrey Taylor of, of Geoffrey Taylor, and he's a tailor by trade. Mm -hmm. So he grew up even in, in it as well. My grandparents were kilt makers. For me, third generation along and having real um, commitment to the company. I, I wanted to be able to make kilts myself. So it was pure out of experiment. Made this silver snakeskin PVC <laughs> 10 years ago. That was the kind of starting point to say that kilts could be still good quality, but made in alternative fabrics. More modern. More modern for Cooler. any man. shouldn't be scorned upon. I mean, when I first started, I mean, I was 18 when I did this. I'm sure people said, yeah. I, I mean, there's nothing more traditional than, than the kilt, I don't think, for the, uh, the Scottish man. So when you started doing, you know, commando and there's like even leather kilts, what were people saying? What bugs me about purists as, and traditionalists, which I hate even those terms, because they don't wear a kilt every day, I do, which is what originally kilt wearing was, it was an everyday piece of clothing. Yeah. So to stand in a bow tie and a Prince Charlie and very traditional and say, this is wrong, 
I'd be like, well, no, you're wrong. That's Victorian. You've got to realize everything moves on, everything evolves. One of the first things I noticed is that you've got quite a few celebrities that... Uh, yeah, we've there's, got... There's uh, Robbie Williams... Uh, and Vin Diesel. Um, you know, I mean, I would like some Canadian... Mike Myers, Jim Carrey, if you're out there. <laughs> Speaking of wearing, will you pick out a few for me to try? Absolutely. I think we should try the blues. Okay. What do you, do you undo the top of your trousers for me? Yeah. Here, will you hold... Here, will you hold that? Yeah, yeah, no worries. I'll, I'll do this. You get that. Yes. So we're here at Jeffrey Taylor, live in Edinburgh. Hey, that's quite good. Yeah. Except we're not live. <laughs> Probably my big you know, I'm alive. Yes, we, you certainly are. Jeff, have you left your shirt? Oh, we're yeah. going to do it like... Yeah, okay. I'm going to show everyone how it's done. Okay. Okay, lift your shirt up a wee bit. Yep. Wee secret pocket. Very what's handy. This, what's this for? Cash, credit cards, party tricks, novelties. <laughs> I love it. That comes in handy. People trying it on commando. <laughs> That's, that, is that a hitch? Don't take your underwear off, Bill. <laughs> well, no, if you want, I mean, in your scenario, if you want to try and feel the freedom factor. You bring up a really good point. Traditionally, you know, what do you wear under the kilt? <laughs> <laughs> well, traditionally, underwear didn't exist. So, you know, so I mean, you know, the whole sort of history and the stereotype and the, I hate, don't mean to be so harsh on that, but I mean, it's a question we're always asked. Yes. And I say, quite honestly, you know, during the day, wearing it every day, practical, I, I wear Calvin sort of yeah. nice that boxer, makes sense. boxer That's briefs. That's very honest. I like that. If I'm, if I'm out answer. at night, I mean, I'm a big guy. If I'm out at night, I need a bit of Vaseline between my legs. <laughs> <laughs> be honest. Stop the chafing. thing. You'd have to wear big socks. What you want, yeah. You... you know what? I have to admit, the actual kilt is pretty comfortable. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it feels all right. Is. But we have a foot shoe fetish. Yeah, I know. I do. I <laughs> mean, that's all yours? Yeah, that's just You're like a gay man trapped in a straight man's body. Yeah, totally, totally. <laughs> My girlfriend does worry about me. She does. No, um, this feels absolutely great. Leather? I like it. Have a look in the mirror. It's really light. Really... And that's still six yards. Six yards of and leather. That has this actually feels a little more streamlined than the fabric one. Yeah. Believe it or not. Yeah. I don't like that. <laughs> And that wraps up this edition of Pink Planet in Edinburgh, Scotland. We are off to our next destination. I'm Bill Mantis. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. For more information about gay life in Edinburgh, visit www.pinkplanet.tv. In three, two, one. This is the Convent of Dunedin in Edinburgh, Scotland. And you're watching Pink, Pink, Pink Planet. Planet. A little more energy and it would kill you to smile. Edinburgh is the most beautiful city in Scotland and I'm from Glasgow and Edinburgh is a castle in the high street and you really cannot beat a f castle in the high street. We, uh, we had a few beers in there, got to know a few people and I actually, believe it or not, got a number of a person. <laughs> Didn't know he was gay but apparently it's materialised that he was. So, you win. If you're ever watching this, give me a bell. <laughs>